Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the sixth Sunday of Easter. Are you or someone you know curious about becoming a Catholic? Come to a first RCIA gathering this Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. in Gillen Hall. Anyone is welcome. This year's Vacation Bible School, Passport to Peace, will be held June 13th through the 17th. This year's international theme promises to be great fun. Registration forms are in the vestibules or online, so please sign up your children before the deadline of May 31st. Members of the Columbiettes will be in Gillen Hall after Mass to collect recipes and take orders for their 2022 cookbook. The Knights of Columbus is sponsoring a family night out to the Fireflies baseball game on Saturday, June 18th at 6.05 p.m. A fireworks display will follow after the game. We welcome anyone from our parish to join in for a fun night. The cost is $11 per person. Please contact Mike Hackwright if you are interested in attending. Please see the bulletin for all details and contact information. The celebrant for this Mass is Father McDonald. We pray in a special way today for Honey Bronson. We continue to celebrate the Easter season today, this 50-day celebration of the risen Lord's victory over the grave. It stretches from Easter Sunday itself to Pentecost Sunday, when we mark the day when the Holy Spirit came down upon the first apostles. At the Last Supper, Jesus told his disciples that he and the Father would make their dwelling with them and send the Holy Spirit to remind them of everything he taught them. We rejoice this Easter season for God's abiding presence with us. As we begin, please join in our gathering hymn in the blue hymnal, number 732, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 732. Please rise.
Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you make your dwelling among us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to the heavenly city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Lord, have mercy. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul Barnabas and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. 
the apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have, with one accord, decided to choose representatives to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, 
like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe. The Gospel of the Lord. See if you can uh, supply the next line. In every life we have some trouble, but when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. Bobby McFerrin, right? You know, and and. Uh, a catchy tune and, and uh, one that's a real toe tapper and, and, and when you're in a good mood and things are going fine, you want to sing along with it. Um, don't worry, be happy. Everything's all right. Easy to listen to when things are fine. But what about when things are not going so well? And I think here, uh, in particular, for young people today, uh, we're, we're, we're observing, we're being told by by uh, health, mental health professionals in particular, there's a crisis going on, and I can understand why. Even though we're returning to a bit more normalcy in terms of school and, and uh, a sense of, of at least uh, less threat from the pandemic, 
nonetheless, uh, the anxiety that has been kicked up, not just by the pandemic, but even just by life today, remains considerable. And I think it's been it's still with us. And uh, I've certainly seen it over the past year as well. And uh, you know, back when the pandemic first began, you know, that couldn't go to school. Uh, with masking and so forth, all the things that made us isolated, we had to stick to our pods and, and uh, not travel, not take vacations. And we're kind of in a, in a, a time now where we want to make up for all of that. Uh, but, you know, it, that led to stress. Not, not to mention also the fear of sickness itself and perhaps even having family members that got seriously ill or even passed away because of this. A million people, a million two and a half years since this began. And then add to that some of the, the pressures of, of our age, you know, and I think they're always there, but, but in, in, they're, in, they're here in new ways, you know, the, the pressure to succeed, you know, get into that right college, get that right resume as you, as you apply for work or for, or for school, after school, get those, keep those grades up, uh, get those skills, get the right service curriculum on your uh, on what you send to the uh, colleges uh, as well as social media today where measuring up to what we see others appear to be like uh, and comparing ourselves to what we see and uh, sometimes feeling rotten about ourselves like feeling like I don't measure up in some fashion I mean I'm, I'm probably painting much too simplistically just to say that uh, not just young people, but, but everybody, but young people in particular. Good reasons, or lots of reasons, to feel anxiety. And, uh, and today, you know, if you were some, in, in having a bad day like this, you might not be toe-tapping with, don't worry, be happy. You might say, you can't just turn that off and on like a, a switch. But if you listen to the gospel today, it sounds like Jesus is being rather simplistic there. Have no worries. Don't be worried. Uh, don't be anxious or, or fearful, he says. I'm here to, I bring you peace. Not as the world gives it, but I bring you peace. Uh, he tells his, his disciples that he will dwell with them, uh, that, that he wants us to love one another. And he also promises an advocate, someone who sticks up for us. Those are all things that, that maybe, uh, you know, sound like very positive things, but keep in mind that in the background of all that he's talking about here, it's the Last Supper. Within hours, he will be arrested. He knows he's going to be, something's going to happen. He's, he's speaking about going away, and, 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 but returning at the same time too. But, but nonetheless, you know, he will, as Luke's gospel say, sweat blood in that garden, asking God, take this away if you can from me. And yet he also can entrust himself to the Father, and yet not my will but yours be done. And therein lies something of the clue here to, to our, our, our addressing some of our needs when we feel anxious or, or down, or, and that is to, to somehow claim faith and trust in the midst of that. And that's not easy. Again, it's not simply a switch you turn on and off. But he promises us a few things in his gospel that I think do, in fact, call us to, and perhaps even are a vehicle by which we can find that balance and that trust renewed. And so uh, he, he, he calls his disciples to love each other and he will dwell with his disciples. When we know that we're loved, we're secure, aren't we? Certainly more secure. Jesus promises peace. He says, not as the world gives it. He knows he can't give us peace in, the, in terms of the absence of suffering or conflict. That's not the kind of peace he can give. He says we all must take up our cross. But he does promise perhaps peace in the, in the Jewish sense of it, in the Hebrew sense of it, of, of well-being or wholeness. You know, the, the image that that John has of the new Jerusalem is this beautiful, secure city within which the Lamb provides the light. Deep inside of each one of us, 
New Jerusalem is already there, if you will. There is something inside of us that is inviolable, made by God. And God's love dwells there. We don't trust that, <laughs> always. We live in a lot of fear rather than in faith. But it's there. And to live out of that love and that peace, that wholeness, is, by the grace of God, possible. And we grow into it. It's not there from the start, necessarily, because of our fears and our, our, uh, our struggles. But it's there to claim in our lives. You know, uh, Jesus himself uh, was declared to be beloved by the Father at his baptism. He was declared by the Father, he was, uh, the Father declared that he was pleased with his Son at the transfiguration. And I'm convinced that is what sustains Jesus in the midst of that garden of Gethsemane when he is sweating blood and he is anxious and finding it difficult to trust. And so, too, we can live out of that declared love, that existing, dwelling love within us. By our baptism, we have been declared beloved sons and daughters. In our confirmation, I'm convinced all sacraments really are an I love you from God. Confirmation in the sense that with the empowerment of this love that says you're pleasing through that perfumed oil, that out of that security that comes from that, gifts can be unleashed. We can open ourselves to our lives being fruitful, powerful even, courageous, wise. And so we also then have not just these two sacraments that are one time only, but the continuing sacrament of the Eucharist, whereby we come here and we put on the altar the bread and the wine, and we remember what Jesus did, but we also put on the altar what happened last week, the test you bombed, the awkward way that you kind of dissed your friends, as well as the successes connections, the, the joys, the things you're thankful for, the things you're sorrowful for, the losses. Everything goes on the altar. That's the point of the offering here. We give it to God in faith. And God slowly but surely transforms that bread and wine. And our receiving of that love Hopefully, slowly, we're being transformed more and more like Christ. The Holy Spirit comes among us as advocates, someone who's going to plead for us. Sometimes that Spirit will it'll be, come in the realization, maybe after receiving Eucharist, ah, it's okay. Or in the midst of an anxious moment, it's okay. Trust. Or maybe it's the Holy Spirit prompting that parent, that friend, that teacher, that brother or sister to listen or maybe have a word of support. In whatever way, Jesus promises all kinds of gifts, promised in the midst of a time of anxiety. And so let's once again give it all back to him, put it on the altar, and to be at peace and to trust are loved. Let's profess our faith.
because we believe in the love God has for us, we offer our prayers for the church and the world. For the church, that we may always seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we witness to our faith in a constantly changing world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace Christ blessed with us may be extended to our neighbors across the street, across the country, and across the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For legislators and judges, and all who make or interpret laws, that they may avoid putting burdens beyond what is necessary on those affected by those laws. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who were initiated into our church this Easter, that they may be a sign of hope and renewal in the church. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the war in Ukraine, for all those who have died and have been wounded, displaced, or have lost their homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we may always love the Lord and keep his word and be a visible sign of God's dwelling place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are ill and for those listed in our bulletin prayer list, and for those who have died, especially Connie Bronson and Lucy Allen, that their families and loved ones may find comfort, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Now in silence, we offer prayers for those we hold in our hearts, those who have asked for our prayers, and for those who have no one to pray for them. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer and bring us into your glory, united in one spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is in the blue hymnal, number 481, What Wondrous Love Is This, number 481.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours, what we offer from this altar today, will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed the whole, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jacques our Bishop, with all the clergy and your entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
that with them we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Our communion hymn is in the blue hymnal, number 432, How Great Thou Art.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a quick word. Uh, would you join first in praying the prayer for building church together, which is found in the back inside cover of your blue hymnal? Loving God, we turn to you with grateful hearts for what we have and with great anticipation for what is yet to be. Bless us with a sense of unity, a spirit of cooperation, and a generous heart as we build church together. May our goals be rooted in your word and in your work. May the house of worship we help in this grow as a parish. May it unleash new energies in us to address the challenges and opportunities we face as faith-filled disciples of your son, Jesus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. There's good news that this past week we surpassed $3 million in our campaign to build our new church. Yes, very good. That comes from a little over 300 uh, donors, approximately or maybe slightly less than half of the number that we received in the campaign three years ago. So I'm pleased that we've gotten this far with these donors. We still need more gifts, and uh, please talk it up among your friends from the parish. Uh, and uh, I encourage anyone who has not yet made a gift to do so. It's uh, we've got materials certainly at all of our exits, and uh, uh, you can return those at any time. Uh, we'll be we'll be starting to make some calls and visits throughout the month of June, and uh, I hope that that will not only be a, a way to not only uh, ask for a gift to the campaign, but in some cases to to make the reconnection for people that may have not felt comfortable being back since the pandemic began, and to uh, check on uh, our contact information, make sure people are getting our communications, check on the email addresses and phone numbers, and make sure that those are accurate as well. So uh, please don't panic when you get a call from me or from someone else in my name. Uh, but be glad to have a chat and to catch up. Uh, I appreciate very much all the volunteers that have worked on this campaign and those that continue to do so. I very much appreciate all that have made gifts thus far. And I, I believe that we'll, it's gonna be, it's a little different reality now, post-pandemic, well, I shouldn't say post-pandemic, in the, in the tamping down right now period that we're in. Uh, but uh, since our, things are different in the world today, it's just gonna take us a little longer. But I feel confident we're gonna make our goal and we're gonna get started in 2023. Thank you to everyone. I think that's it. Uh, this, uh, this coming Thursday uh, traditionally is Ascension Thursday, the 40th day after Easter. But in our province, in South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, it's moved to the Sunday that follows. So next Sunday is Ascension Sunday. And uh, so there's not a holy day of obligation this Thursday. And the Columbiettes will be in the back accepting recipes and orders for their cookbook. I'd love to see a, a cookbook that represents the diversity of our parish. I think that, let it reflect us, whether it's across the country or around the world. Uh, I think this will be a really, really neat uh, thing to have and to enrich our lives. And I think that's it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is in the blue hymnal, number 570, Alleluia, number one, number 570. Mm -hmm. 